Hey there, it's Cass. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit new. On this channel, for the most part, I've really only posted finished pieces that are nicely lined and colored. I thought it would be a really nice idea to start posting pages where I just try to draw whatever is in my head at the time, and maybe sketch out some different things and talk you guys through my process, without really being worried about if the final product is finished or not. Almost like a sketchbook, and I can use this series to talk about different techniques that you can all use to improve your art process as well. I hope you all find it helpful. Anyway, let's jump right into the video. Okay, this is going to be one of the first videos where instead of me doing a hard script where I have everything written out that I just kind of have bullet points written and am talking about it a little bit more off hook. So if this seems slightly less organized to you guys, I apologize, I'm getting used to doing stuff like this. But to start with, I decided to start with just a simple headshot. Normally when I'm doing things like warm-ups, I like to try to start with something very simple and something that I feel really comfortable with. I feel like when you're sketching and you're just trying to kind of get into the groove of drawing, it's really important to stay loose, especially when you're first starting out, because at least in my experience, I have ruined entire drawing sessions where I feel like I've gotten nothing done because I tried to jump right into some big project. <laughs> so I started with just a simple headshot and decided to try some fun new stylistic things with it. When I'm sketching heads, I normally start with just a simple circle with two lines through it, and I use that as kind of the basis for the proportions. Um, I'll make an entire video talking about facial proportions at some point, but just as like a little hint, the horizontal line that you see is my basis for where the eyes and the ears go, and then the vertical line tells me where the nose and the mouth go. Um, and from there, I just kind of start working in the details. I like to start working on the eyes, which I know a lot of people say is not great art advice, but for me, the eyes are such a big part of my style that not focusing on them right away in a drawing seems strange. <laughs> Uh, and during this drawing, I didn't really have an idea for what character I was drawing until I added these horns just because I felt like they looked cool. And it slowly started turning into one of my favorite D&D characters. Um, not mine, actually. One of my friends. Uh, her name is Levki. Uh, she is my friend Avery's character. He had created this just amazing tiefling girl who honestly, the campaign that we played in wouldn't have happened without her. I want to make an entire video about her story because it's just so cool and I love her character so much. But uh, the gist of it is that Levki was able to befriend a god who was distraught and not thinking well of the world and humanity. And she was able to change his mind just through being pure of heart and being a good person. And she's just been on my mind constantly, so that's who I decided to turn this little headshot into. You'll notice that when I'm drawing things like hair, I tend to stay very loose during the sketching process, and that's just because when it comes to hair, I like it to look very fluffy and very almost messy for the most part. I tend to focus on one point on the hair where all the hair comes together like a part, and from there I just kind of build little strands and little floofy bits off of that until it looks like a full head of hair. Um, I think that doing it this way is just very fun and it keeps the style very cartoony. I just like really drawing fluffy hair things. <laughs> so for the second drawing, um, I decided to start moving into something that would be more considered practice and not just me warming myself up. So um, I started drawing a half body sketch here and I did use a reference for all of the uh, next couple sketches in this video. And I wanna talk about how I draw sketches for poses and how I use reference. Um, to start with, you'll notice that I draw the body before I draw the head shape. I think this is something that a lot of people don't do when they're sketching, and it's so important to my current process because something that I notice I do and also that other people do is that they tend to draw the head first and then the head always ends up way too big for the body. When you're sketching, try to break things down into really simple shapes and start with the chest area. Get kind of the basic shape of the pose laid out and then add the head on top of that instead. I find that doing that helps me keep the body way more in proportion. Now, when it comes to using things like references, 
um, I highly recommend when you're trying to practice poses and practice breaking things down, use things like reference. Use photos of yourself, use photos of your friends. And if you don't like the idea of taking pictures of yourself, there are tons of awesome stock references that are free online. The ones that I'm using here, although you can't see them on screen, uh, I have two screens. So normally when I'm recording, I keep like a second page open with different websites and stuff for free resources open, um, is Adorka stock on DeviantArt. Um, their stock photos have saved me so many times. Um, they're wonderful to use and they have an awesome Patreon. A lot of their resources are also free to use. Uh, please check them out. Uh, this is not sponsored or anything, but all of their stuff is fantastic. Uh, and I think that more so as artists, especially beginner artists, when you're starting out, using pose references can seem like cheating. And I know that in a lot of art circles recently, like especially on TikTok, I've noticed, I've seen people accusing other artists of stealing poses or stealing art styles, which I'm going to come out and say, this might be an unpopular opinion, but I don't think that's really a thing for the most part. Like tracing and other things can be kind of a artistic minefield in the modern day. Oop, you guys get to hear my cat talking. Um, but tra tracing and other kinds of copying and artwork can be very, I guess, unpopular and, uh, it's it's sort of a very divided opinion amongst the community. My current opinion is that if you are using a reference, like a real photo or something that is meant to be used as a piece of stock that like you're supposed to be using as something for a tool that you're doing something with, rather than just directly copying an artist's work that you like, that's totally fine. And honestly, as someone who went to art college, they teach us to do that. Like full stop when i was in art college it was very much are you having trouble drawing this pose go and go online and find a reference that's similar to the pose that you're looking for and use that to help you improve now when it comes to things like completely copying a piece of artwork from an artist especially when it's in terms of like stylistically that is more of kind of a red flag maybe don't do that when it comes to artists. But I also would like to point out that when you're trying to find your style, there's nothing wrong with looking at your favorite artists and trying to copy elements of their art and incorporate it into your own. The difference is trying to find ways to make it yours. And also, maybe don't post everything that you draw when it comes to, like, if you're directly copying a piece of an artist's work so you can learn from it. Like, there's nothing wrong with copying something and then just not posting it because it was meant for practice and not necessarily meant for other people to see. You want to be respectful to the other artists around you, and especially if it's an artist you look up to and enjoy their style. So if you're doing stuff like that, it's honestly, in my opinion, kind of fine. Just make sure you're doing it respectfully, and if you're directly copying some of their work, maybe don't post that. Maybe use that as something to learn from, and then try to make your own pieces that incorporate the things you learned from copying that piece. Um, now, you'll notice here that I'm struggling with drawing some hands, and that's fine. <laughs> uh, hands are still very hard for me, especially just closed fists, uh, and I need to find more time to just sit down and draw hand poses, uh, and maybe we can do a little video at some point of me breaking down how I draw hands and trying to work out on how to improve drawing hands in an easier way. But um, something that I wanted to talk about in general is just breaking down a pose. One of the things that I love to do when I'm drawing a pose that I struggle with for the first time is to take the pose and if I have a reference image copy and paste that into my clip studio or for you it might be paint tool sci or photoshop whatever art program you're using lower the opacity of the photo that i'm referencing and then draw right over it and break down the shapes so you can understand what shapes the body sort of can be broken down into from there i kind of look at that drawing that i've now drawn over and then on a completely separate canvas i try to draw it myself and break it down that's actually something I wish I had done with the thing that I'm currently drawing. So after finishing the second sketch of mine, I decided to start working into a more difficult pose for me specifically. I have a lot of trouble drawing poses of people sitting. Uh, I 
got into this habit of always drawing characters standing for the longest time that I never got practice drawing people in sitting poses. I don't know how that ended up happening, but just because I'm always drawing D&D characters and stuff who are standing with their weapons, drawing sitting poses became kind of hard for me. So you'll notice I kind of start over here because I wasn't happy with how this pose was working out. And I think that's something else that's really important to talk about is it is totally okay to not be happy with a sketch and just start over if you need to. Also, my cat says hello. <laughs> um, but uh, I think it's important to say that like, you know, all artists struggle with poses or struggle with different things throughout their art, especially if you are, you're a newer artist. If you see that all of us are just posting really finished, awesome looking pieces all the time, it can be really daunting to like see your own sketches and see how you struggle and then compare it to everyone's finished product. Don't do that. I promise you, we all have pages of sketches that we're not happy with. <laughs> Um, but, uh, I feel as though, uh, doing things like this where you're working out a pose and trying to really break down the shapes, even if it doesn't come out perfectly, is awesome practice. And you'll see here that, like, even though I'm not super happy with the pose, I'm starting to get it to the point where, like, okay, yeah, I can kind of tell that she's sitting. I'm still not super happy with her lower torso and, like, where her legs are coming up, but it's getting there. Um, and I do improve on it a little bit more as I draw the finer details in this drawing. Um, the character that I ended up drawing for this one was uh, my character Astrid from our campaign. You guys have heard a little bit about her, I'm sure, if you've watched our Saphir video, because her entire family were major villains in the D&D campaign that I ran. Um, but I want to talk a little bit more about kind of the way that we use reference and the weirdness about people using art reference for honestly in my opinion kind of no reason um i think that it's a little strange that there are so many people now who are like well why can't you just draw that yourself and why are you using reference you shouldn't need to reference photos that's cheating is something that i've heard a lot recently from a lot of the younger art crowd and i think it just comes from a place of not understanding kind of the process that a lot of artists who are older that we use to do our artwork. When I'm using a reference to do a sketch page like this, I'm not necessarily using it in order to make a fully finished piece for like a commission or anything like that. And like sometimes I do, I'll, I'll openly admit that a lot of times when I'm doing things like commissions, I use reference. Although normally when it's a commission reference, uh, you'll notice that uh, it'll be a picture of either me or one of my friends. Uh, very often I will post in the uh, friend group discord that I have of just, hey, can somebody maybe take a photo of their hand doing this? Uh, and one of my friends will send me a picture of a hand that I can then reference for the drawing. But um, when we use reference as artists, it's so we can understand the concepts within that drawing and then use them again later without having to use the reference. So for me, what I'm trying to break down here as I'm drawing this character is how exactly do the hips sit on this little bench or this surface in a way that makes it look like they're sitting and that they're, the legs are then coming forward in the space. So that's something that I struggle a lot with just because I haven't practiced it very much. But using reference for that in this image is incredibly important because then later on, once I've done it with reference and I've broken it down and I kind of understand how it works and how to make it work in my style, the next time I have to draw that for either a commission or a personal piece or anything that I'm finishing really, I won't necessarily have to use that reference. And like, it might take a couple of tries. Sometimes when I'm drawing something, it takes me a while to get used to it. Like a lot of really extreme perspective poses take me a while to get used to drawing without a reference. And I'll have to use a couple of references over and over and over again while I'm drawing them in order to make it so I don't need that reference anymore. But I think that that is kind of the piece that a lot of people are missing. When an artist uses a reference, it's not just so they don't have to think about what they're drawing. It's not cheating. It's using it so that they know what to do next time. We don't always need to use reference. Like you'll notice for the face shot that I did, I didn't use a reference at all. 
it was just from my brain, I know exactly where everything goes because I'm used to drawing it. And that's how we get used to drawing it, is by understanding and breaking down those shapes. Um, I know I've talked about the fact that I've gone to art college before, um, and one of the things that we learned in art school that was like fundamental to everything that we do is to understand the shapes that you're drawing, especially when it comes to people. Um, I took a figure drawing class, actually I took multiple figure drawing classes while I was in college, and we always had people sitting in front of us while we were drawing. And the point of doing that was in order for us to be able to understand how a figure worked and be able to reference then our old sketches whenever we were drawing something new and didn't have someone around to pose for us. It can be so important to use reference because of that. Um, but I think that uh, it's just something really important to do. And you'll notice that like when it comes to drawing things like hands, which are something that I super struggle with, I'm actually relatively happy with Astrid's little hand that she's got pointed out here. Because one of the things I struggle with is fingers overlapping each other in different ways. And I'm actually really happy with how that little sketch came out. It's still kind of messy, but it's also a sketch, so it doesn't have to be perfect. I think I got the proportions kind of okay. But uh, I think that's pretty much it for this video. Don't be afraid to use reference and don't be afraid to borrow things from artists in order to improve. Just keep it your own in the end. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Stay spooky.